ओम नमो लोए सर्वत्र कावर्ती अरियंताणम ओम नमो लोए सर्वत्र कावर्ती सिद्धाणम ओम नमो लोए सर्वत्र कावर्ती आयरियाणम ओम नमो लोए सर्वत्र कावर्ती उवज्जायाणम ओम नमो लोए सर्वत्र कावर्ती श्रावणम ओंकारम बिंदु संयुक्त निगिनम कामद मोक्षदम चंकाराय नमो नम नम समय साराय स्वानुभूत चकाशते चीक्षवाय भावाय सर्वभावाचिदे अज्ञानतिरंजन ज्ञान अंजन शलाकया चक्षुर मिलत तस्म श्रीगुरव नम तीर्थंकर जगत नजयवंतवर्तोकारनाद जिननो जयवंतवर्त जिनन समो शरण सौ जयवंतवर्तो ने तीर्थचार जगम जयवंतवर्त अनंत अनंत भाव भेद थी बरली बली अनंत अनंत नयानी क्षेत्र व्याख्या सकल जगत हित कारिणी हरिणी मोह तारिणी बवाभी मोक्ष चारिणी प्रमाणी छे उपमा आप जेने तरा खबीते व्यक्त आप मई मे मानी छे अहो राज चंद्र बाल ख्याल नहीं पमताए जी ने स्वर तणी वाणी जानी तेने जानी छे गुरु राज तणी वाणी जानी तेने जानी छे ओ नम सिद्धेव्यो ओके <coughs> so we were on this slide last time when we just uh, completed our discussion uh what is destructive karma remember we talked and again it will be okay to revise because it's very important we have to have clear idea the word destructive karma means it it it, 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 it verbal definition it destroys some things right so what does it destroy well something into the soul it has to destroy material karma that's a destructive karma are on this side soul is on this side so that means material karma does something to destroy something in the soul that's a verbal definition material karma on this side karma and the matter object soul is a conscious element so material karma destructive karma they destroy something into the soul what what are the components of the soul then soul has a component in the form of substance attributes and modes does this destructive karma destroy substance of the soul this is the soul over here for example if we just consider soul there is a soul over here and soul has a substance attributes and modes so three things are present in the soul substance is eternal it was never created will never be destroyed it's there forever you know we are so used to see the origination and destruction there was nothing on this ground for yesterday and today i see a big building and tomorrow that building got destroyed 
these are the things. A, a, a child is born and he lives up to 18, 19, 95, whatever years, and then he dies. So we see the origination, we see destruction, but that origin of substance as a soul, as a substance is eternal, was never created, will never be destroyed. So you, it, it cannot be created, cannot be destroyed. So destructive karma cannot do anything to this soul, soul substance, right? This is soul. Now, attributes, there are infinite attributes in the soul and they are also eternally existing in the soul substance. So you cannot destroy attributes. So destructive karma cannot do anything to the soul as a substance. Destructive karma do, cannot do anything to the soul as an attribute. Then the last thing remains. Now I have to fix up something in the modes. Modes means my changes, my, my, my modification occurring in, the, in me, <clears throat> for example. In the morning, my alarm goes on, five o'clock morning. And I'm still in deep sleep. So I put on snooze. After nine minutes, again, it alarm goes on. I put on snooze, two, three times I put on snooze, and finally I had to wake up. So sleep to waking up is one modification. Then I started reciting Namukha Mantra, etc. Then I went to the bathroom. Then I started doing tooth brushing. Then I started taking shower. Then I just went to the temple. Then I started doing an, uh, started taking breakfast. And then I started, so this kind of changes, changes, changes occurring within me since morning till evening. Or a child is born, a child is born and given name. <clears throat> Let's say he's giving the name Kirit. That child, the, the newborn child is a toddler, Kirit. Goes to preschool, Kirit. Elementary school, Kirit. Middle school, high school, college, medical school, practice, retirement. Kirit, 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 Kirit. And that person ends up dying. Kirit died. So all throughout the life, changes occurred, changes occurred, changes occurred. But name Kirit remained constant. That means soul as a substance forever and ever. The word Kirit was only birth till death, but this soul substance is ever and ever and ever. So it also has changes occurring. Changes in the form that this soul has taken the shape of a human being. Tomorrow, the change will occur. It will go to hell. Then it will go to heaven. Then it will go to subhuman. Then it will look to human again. And this change just keeps on coming and coming and going and coming and going forever and ever and ever. So modification of modes, that's a soul has it. So now, can destructive karma cannot do anything to the substance and attribute. Can it do something to the modes? Okay, Let, let's analyze that fact. Modes. Changes occurring in the soul substance. For example, this is an iPhone. I, I'm showing you this iPhone and you say it looks old. Maybe a year, two year old, three year old, God knows whatever. How did this phone become old? Because every moment it changes are occurring in that substance. When we have not seen that newborn child for a long time, and then we go to that our cousin's place and say, oh, look at this young kid. He, he grew up so much. He didn't grow up just when you saw him. Every second he is growing, he is growing, he is growing. Similarly, in the soul, every moment modification keeps on occurring. 
What is moment? It's called samai. What is samai? Blink of an eye. Innumerable time units samai pass by, moments pass by. Innumerable means million, billion, trillion, quadrillion, all those things are countable number. There are certain numbers of beyond the countable number. They are called uncountable number. Some in the literature, somebody says 10 to the power of 29 or 10 to the power of 49 and some number falling somewhere in between, whatever, that's called innumerable number and that many summer, that many moments, that many time units pass by in a blink of an eye. So every moment changes are occurring and origination of the mode occurs and disintegration occurs. Origination occurs, next one disintegration occurs. Third one, origination occurs, disintegration occurs. Fourth one, origination occurs, disintegration occurs. So this mode lasts for one samai only. It, it originates and disintegrates by itself. So how can you destroy that one which has life only for one samai, which is a fraction of a time? In a blink of an eye, innumerable samai units pass by million, billion, trillion, quadrillion and more. How can you destroy that one? It keeps on coming, going, coming and going, coming and going, coming and going. So that means it is so transient in nature, before you can try to kill it, before you try to destroy it, it already disintegrates by itself. So now destructive karma cannot do anything to this mode also. So then what is the function of the destructive karma? What does it do then? How come you give the name destructive karma when it cannot do anything to this given soul, substance, attribute and mode, it cannot do anything to them? How can you just give the name destructive karma? I have a gun and I had a bullet, and when I just uh, was triggered the, uh, 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 trigger the gun, the bullet comes out and it kills the person in front of the bullet. So that's why it's called destructive bullet. But here, this guy has not done anything here. So why did he get the name destructive karma? It's food for thought. You have to think about it. Because remember, spirituality and Jain spirituality is extremely microscopic. You must have realized by now, so many classes we did, and now you realize that this. So something, the, the name destructive karma cannot do anything to the soul, still called destructive. Something has to be funny. Something has to be hidden message, which we shall not discuss here. So then we just say, okay, when there is presence of influence of attachment and influence of aversion, then this karma are instrumental cause. In the sense, this mode, this mode that I have, it can be in two form, pure mode or impure mode. And impure mode can have influence of attachment and aversion. Rag and dvesh can occur in this impure mode. This, this mode creates impurity by itself. I created anger within me because of me, by me. I am the reason, I am the problem. I created the anger, deceit, ego, greed, likes and dislikes, stages in me. I am the culprit. This in the, in the changes occurring in the mode in the form of impurity, ragandvesh, I am the reason. While I am creating this impurity within me, at that time, 
there is certain karma present in the form of instrumental cause. For example, there's a banana peel on the ground. And I'm walking and I put my foot on the banana peel and I fell down and broke my hip. What, whom do we blame? Banana peel or me? Well, banana peel was there. You all went through it, but you were careful. So you went on sideways from the banana peel. So you die, you did not fall down. What was happening to me? I was just looking above and looking here, looking there, and all kind of crazy thing. I was doing it and I was not attentive on the ground. And now my foot fell on this uh, 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 banana peel and I broke my hip. Or maybe I was doing text messaging or checking my messages or God knows whatever I was playing with my phone and I was inattentive. My foot fell on the uh, banana peel and I fell down. Who is responsible here? My inattention is responsible. My impurity, my inattention, my wrath is responsible. And at the time, banana peel is simply present there as instrumental cause. So what when I go to emergency room, I'm taken to emergency. What happened? Well. There was a banana peel, my foot went in, I fell down. So because of banana peel, I fell down. That's what sentence will come out from me. But in fact, it was my inattention was the reason. And the banana peel was simply instrumental cause. Destructive karma are simply an instrumental cause when I'm in a rag and wish over here. That's why it's given the name destructive karma. One more example, one more way to understand. I'm feeling absolutely comfortable in this room right now. Tell me what should be the dial on the temperature gauge should read right now. 75, 76, 74, whatever. I'm extremely cold right now. I'm shivering right now. What does the thermostat should to show me? It should show that it is about 50 degree, 55 degree, 60 degree, whatever. In the height of the ever summer in Phoenix, my air condition broke down and I'm perspiring very heavily. I'm very uncomfortable. What does that in our temperature gauge should read? It should read 85, 90, 95, 100, whatever. So job of the thermostat is to reflect what I am feeling inside. Job of the thermostat is to reflect what I'm feeling over here. Job of the karma are the such, it just reflect what I'm feeling internally. So job of the karma is a like thermostat. Simply it shows what it is, what, how I feel. Same way, karma fruition simply acts as an instrumental cause and they reflect what is my internal state inside. So they have not done anything. They are simply like thermostat telling me this destructive karma, telling me that, hey, something is going on into the soul and soul has a rag and wish, soul has an anger, deceit, ego, greed. So nothing is happening here. All the actions are occurring to the soul substance and soul substance by itself created that impure mode and the destructive karma are simply an instrumental cause reflecting my disturbed state into the soul. Is that clear? This has to be absolutely clear in our mind because now, now we fulfill. 
soul is over soul i mean soul is over here and destructive karma over here they do their own individual work this they, they are just saying fruition of the karma and this thing soul end up being in impurities they both are independent events just like that at uh, 8 o'clock morning the kid comes out of the house 8 o'clock morning the bus comes out so in the other uh, in this apartment complex out uh, on the next next door a guy from the window every day he see so he says because the kid comes out the bus came his wife says no 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 bus came and that's why kid came out while they both were arguing their own little child said daddy and mommy you are arguing but they both are independent school bus came because it is supposed to come a kid came out because he's supposed to come now today this kid came out and he forgot his jacket so he went in and he came out to 5 minutes so now bus is already here and he came 5 minutes late or the kid came out on time but the bus got st stuck into the traffic and it came 5 minutes late so what so now they both are independent but eight o'clock morning child comes out and bus comes out so it appears that because of child bus comes because of bus comes child comes out whatever way but they are independent so destructive karma fruition is independent my impurity in the form of rag dwesh is independent but they both occur at the same time that's why it appears that this guys destructive karma are the culprit making me go into the rag and dwesh this has to be so clear in our mind one substance cannot do anything to the other substance that's a absolute fact we cannot ignore that fact you may say no 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 because of me i am the parents and i took care of my child what's wrong with that nothing wrong you did your job of raising the kid and kid did his job to grow up both are occurring simultaneously so wrongfully i take the credit that i am the reason that this kid is growing up how many kids are there in this orphanage you mean they don't grow up so everybody are independent yes i may take the credit just like that dog walking under the bullock cart and he says because of him the bullock cart is moving that's what we are taking undue credit i am the head of the family if i'm not here how this household household is going to run son you don't know that part if you are gone maybe this household will run even better than what it is running right now so don't take that undue credit unnecessarily so this is what destructive karma definition so i i just want to take we, we, we talked last week, but it's important that we understand this fact it's extremely important 9 9 out of 100 jains you talk what's a destructive karma definition karma destroys the soul 99 jains will tell you that definition you are there and when you speak this way they 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 think that you are super crazy person no you understand the reality you are not crazy you are realistic person you understand how the system works name is given so what a big deal so this is very important you you have to understand this part if you have question please speak up right now that if you don't get anything here then we will go through detail again but it's very important it should be absolutely crystal clear in the mind 
that what does destructive karma do? It is simply an instrument to cause. What does water do for the fish? Water is simply an instrument to cause. Water cannot make the fish to swim. If water is the reason for fish to swim, then how come the rock that you throw into the water goes, it, goes, it sinks? Because rock has a property of sinking. Fish has a property of swimming. For, for rock to sink, fish to swim, water is simply an instrument to cause. So this has to be absolutely clear. Is that okay? Yes, any question? No? Okay. All right. We'll go to the next slide now. Now we are just going to see non-destructive karma. What? Now we know destructive karma and we know it's only simply instrument to call. It's like a thermostat showing the internal condition of the soul. What does non-destructive karma do? Means whatever this guy's destructive karma will instrument to cause for impurity of the soul. Now, non-destructive karma has no relationship to any of this impurity or purity of the soul. Non-destructive karma cannot do anything. They simply get, they simply provide to the soul associated thing. I have a body. I'm a five feet, six inches tall. I'm 132 pounds weighing. I am not too heavy. I'm, I'm a brown skinned person. All those associative things this soul is having it, that is called due to non-destructive karma. I have, I'm a poor, I'm rich, I'm intelligent, I'm dumb, I'm so short, I'm tall, I'm whatever, whatever, I'm brown, I'm black, I'm white. All those things are associated thing with the soul. It does not do anything to the soul because when the soul on the 13th spiritual development state obtains omniscience, and this is the day we had the right day we can talk. Yesterday was Dipavali. In Dipavali day, Mahavi Swami obtained Nirvana. That was he was his, his age was 72. And prior to that age 42, he obtained omniscience knowledge for 30 years. He kept on preaching Jainism principles. He had total omniscience knowledge. He has an infinite bliss within. He has absence of toxic emotions of any kind, means no rag, no waste, no anger, deceit, ego, greed. And this body, he has it. But body is not doing anything. It's an associative thing present on this Tirthankar Bhagwan and on Deepavali day, even Mahavir Swami gives up his associates with the physical body and soul and body get separated. So at that time, non-destructive karma comes to an end also and soul becomes free soul, goes to the top of the universe, stays into the adobe of Siddha in the form of and have an eternal bliss and eternal knowledge. So that's called destructive, non-destructive karma. It has to be very clear in our mind, this definition. So that way we understand what's happening. So having said that now, we just say that uh, the soul, if we consider soul as a cube, for example, having height, length, and width, then, then length time, width time, height means it's a solid, total solid, means it is a, a solid embodiment of knowledge. That's a soul. Infinite attribute on one, one axis, infinite time on another axis, and in, innumerable space point on third axis, x, y, and z axis, and the multiplication of x times y times z means a solid, 
solid, total solid. Soul is a solid embodiment of knowledge. There is nothing can enter, nothing can, nothing can enter into the soul. There is no entry of influence of attachment or influence of aversion, no entry of anger, deceit, ego, greed into this embodiment of the solid soul substance. So here, soul is detached and without any association. There is no association of any kind at all in this soul. It's just pure embodiment, full of knowledge, and that's it. And that's why Siddha Bhagwan has no physical body, no karma association, nothing. And it remains in an eternal knowledge, an eternal peace, an eternal bliss forever and ever and ever because nothing can enter there. So soul is detached and without any associations. When one is inclusive of attachment state, then karma bondage occurs as we saw in this slide here. When I'm in inclusive of attachment and aversion state, then this destructive karma gets associated with the soul that's called karma bondage. Now here, when, in, when, there, when one has inclusive attachment, then karma bondage occurs. This altered state of inclusive attachment can be removed with knowledge. If I have proper knowledge, if I know what's the soul made up of, what's the structure and function of the soul, what, what, what happens in the soul, how come there are infinite attribute, what's the function of each attribute, how come there is a knowledge is called extraordinary attribute, because that extraordinary knowledge attribute through which the modes of the knowledge we can enter into the soul and we can realize the soul and we can get a right faith and follow which can further go and ultimately we can obtain liberation and we will sit down next to Mahavir Swami's soul into the uh, adobe of Siddha. When we go to temple, we don't go as a beggar. We don't go as a big, oh God, please give me this, please give me that. Uh, I don't have money, so please give me money. I don't have job, please give me job. I don't have health, please give me health. I don't have family stability, give me. No, we don't go as a beggar. We go to Bhagwan with challenge. We tell Bhagwan. Nishchit tere sadasa prabhu arahanta avastha paunga. Hey Lord, you have shown me the path. I have digested that path. I am walking on that path. And I will become like you. That's what we are saying to that Lord. We are just saying, I am going to come next to you when I purify myself. So... This is what it is. I'm not a beggar. I'm the aspirant soul looking for the liberation. So this altered state that I have since time infinite can be removed with the proper knowledge. That knowledge, Aryan Bhagwan has given to us. Mahavi has given to us. Of a naked saints, they have given to us. And enlightened saints, they have given to us. Uh, so, uh, Gurudev Kanji Swami gave it to us. Uh, Srimad Rachandra Ji gave it to us. So we know this knowledge will walk on the path and we will obtain right faith. And this the altered state can be removed with the knowledge. It's called conventional knowledge activity. Means knowledge does not go and alter, uh, remove the altered state because what happens with this knowledge when the knowledge occurs then I know what's the right thing when I know right thing I just reflect myself internally and when I reflect internally in case of attachment and aversion state they automatically disseminate they, dis, they, 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 they get destroyed. They don't stay with me. And that's called 
removal of the altered state. But knowledge did not do it. But conventionally, we can say that knowledge removed the, um, uh, the altered state. Now, so we can blame knowledge as a conventionally removal altered state, but bodily activity is not even that conventional state. I do lots and lots and lots and tons and tons of fasting. It means nothing. Bodily activity cannot do any function of the soul. So when, when I'm the, under the false impression that by doing bodily activity, I'm purifying my soul, that's not true. My neighbor, my neighbor is eating food and my, st my stomach gets full over here. Is that possible? Neighbor is eating food and I'm getting satisfaction here. Is it possible? Not necessarily. The neighbor is eating food, this body is eating food and I feel happy about it. Or this body did not get the food in the form of fasting day. Can it change anything to me as a soul? Not necessarily. So the, your, your wrong impression, wrong belief that bodily activity are helpful to me. I got one person and we were discussing. He's a well-read Jain person also. We're discussing and he said, Kid Bhai, Bhagwan gave us the body. So we have to really, really work against the body so that we can get the um, um, right faith, experiencing of the soul. How can I tell that he is 100% wrong? That activity of the body, which is a matter object, and now you want to have benefit occurring to the soul. No, not necessarily, it never happens. Now, we are talking about eligibility. Srimadji also says eligibility. You have to have eligible person to obtain uh, right faith. Certain criteria have to be there within you so that you can be eligible. So what it says, at the three, four places, he gives different ways. So in one place, he says forbearance, straightforwardness, simplicity, non-entity state. And if we have this kind of thing, then you have eligibility to obtain right faith. Do you see some things familiar over here in this first bullet? Forbearance, straightforwardness, simplicity, non-attachment. They are the exact opposite word of the anger, deceit, ego, and greed. If I tell you, Tell me toxic emotions, anger, deceit, ego, greed. We can just say quickly, but then what's a property of the soul against that? Forbearance, straightforwardness, simplicity, non-attachment state. Tell me about those things very quickly in one sentence. You have to think about it. Your own nature, you have to think about it. And the, the anger, deceit, ego, greed, which are not your true nature, and you remember them very well, because you keep on performing them for time infinite. So that means, that's why we remember them, but we, this is my true nature. So this is the first, first part of the eligibility that if I have this forbearance, straightforwardness, simplicity, non attitude means I am kind of a, uh, uh, the plowed land in which I'm, 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 I'm putting the seeds and ultimately those plowed land and seed will be put in, then the plant will grow. So this is plowing the land, forbearance, straightforwardness, simplicity, not. I have to have that eligibility within me. Other one he says, to have indifference toward worldly affairs, 
detachment from sensual pleasure, diminished nature of unity with the physical body, diminished toxic emotion. So these are the things also when you have it, it will also give you eligibility to receive the uh, spirituality. Broad mindedness, equanimity, equanimity state, straightforwardness, winning over the senses, visual uh, means Vishal Buddhi, Madhyastata, Saralta, Jitendriyapana means broad mindedness, broad mindedness means Vishal Buddhi, equanimity state, Madhyastata, Saralta, straightforwardness. And winning over the uh, senses, Jitendriyapana, means these are also other different places. He, uh, if you just analyze this chapter, actually on each chapter, each bullet, we can discuss our two hours straight on those things. But we will we will we will touch all those things as as we are progressing in the stanza and the different stanza, etc. So we are not going to give any special time for this one. We, we, most of the things kind of all, they are interrelated to each other if we just try to analyze. Restraining of mind from toxic emotion, only wish for liberation, tiredness from transmigration, compassion towards all the living being, faith in omniscience message, means some, some way, it should be near way. Uh, there is a near, near way. Near with, okay. Uh, sorry, sorry for my typo. So, some, some way, nirved, astha, anukampa. These are the five, five things, five things that one has to realize. Some, some way, nirved, astha, anukampa. These five things are the prerequisite for obtaining some darshan. I think there were 28 or 29 stands or something is coming and all those things will be coming at the time that we'll be talking a lot more. But for eligibility, you know, you have to have simplicity, you have to have forbearance, you have to have um, the, uh, re restraining of the toxic, you know, all kind of basic principles, you have to have it so that you are eligible for obtaining right faith. So now, this broad mind about Vishal Buddhi, Madhyasthata, Saralta, Jitendriyapana, it's kind of very, very, very nicely uh, Srimad just mentioned. So we'll talk a little bit on this one. Broad mindedness, Vishal Buddhi means what? First one is just broad mindedness. So Vishal Buddhi means what? One has broad mind for accepting the truth. You have to open mind to accept the truth. Like as we just talk about that uh, destructive karma, you have to open mindedness to accept those explanations. And again, you have to argue also if you don't, if you have question, you argue about it, make sure you get satisfied. So you have to, you don't go with a preconceived idea. It has to be this way or else. No, nothing like that. You have to have broad-mindedness that uh, to my spiritual guru, I know nothing. I'm here. You explain to me and I will understand. So you have to have that uh, broad-mindedness. Broad mind for accepting the nature of reality as it is. Understanding the nature of reality and accepting them. You are fortunate that you are born in a Jain family and or you have interest in Jain philosophy. In London, there is one young girl, I think in the mid third, must be 25, maybe 30 probably. I don't remember exact age for her. But she's born and brought up in England, white girl. She is now doing PhD on Ganji Swami. She went to India, she learned Prakrit, she learned Hindi, she learning Gujarati. Can you imagine how difficult it will be for those kind of people? But there is one determination that I want to learn something. And for that thing, nothing is obstructing. So same way, 
when you have broad mind, broad mindedness about nature of reality, you understand the truth. You ask question, ask more question, get the satisfactory answer. If not, go to next person, to the third, to the fourth, till you get the satisfactory answer. So you have a broad mind for that. He has vast, vast mind and not any narrow mindedness. Don't go to go, don't have preconceived idea. This adjective is for the worthy soul. All those things are given for the worthy soul who has a broad mindedness and he has no narrow mindedness. One has to have broad broadness in his cognitive knowledge. His knowledge has to be ready to accept any kind of challenges and to understand, to go in detail and further detail. So that way you can understand the reality. One who has inquisitiveness to accept the discourses of the learned saying, one has to have inquisitiveness. You simply just, because I'm born in Jain family, so I'm Jain. No, that's not true. One time I was in Chicago in one medical meeting and uh, uh, lunch time occurred. And so they said, okay, lunch is ready. So go to the, the, take your lunch and sit down on the table. So I'm sitting on a table and I'm at the round table. We are sitting and people are talking to each other. So there's next to me, there's a guy sitting and his last name is Jain. So I said, oh, wow, are you Dr. Are you Dr. Jain? He said, yeah. He said, I'm Jain too. He said, whoa, 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 hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. My last name is Jain, but doesn't mean I am Jain. What, what, what do you mean by Look, I'm, I'm eating chicken right now. So, okay, all right, okay. So in the sense, no, name doesn't mean anything. You have to have inquisitiveness. And believe me, when you have inquisitiveness, the growth keeps on opening and you keep on getting better and better information, better ideas, better understanding. Is Disneyland when you go to that haunted house and you're sitting in the chair and chair is going from one room to other room and now now it's going and there's a wall coming and you just say, oh, I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit. And suddenly that door opens up there. Similarly, in spirituality, when you have inquisitiveness, you think you have dead end, nothing is happening. Suddenly a door opens up and you enter in the new phase of spirituality. So don't give up your inquisitiveness. Don't give up your enthusiasm. You are a chosen few people that you are taking your time off to understand. It's gonna work. It's definitely it's gonna work. And that's called broad mindedness. Uh, Vishal Buddhi. Now we are gonna to go to uh, Madhyasthata means uh, equanimity state. What does it mean? To understand a given thing without any prior prejudice. Let me listen what you are telling. It's okay. I, I, I have friends which are non-Jain and they are also well read. I listen to them. I never say, you are wrong, you are wrong, you are wrong. No, no, no. They have put the time, it's okay. I don't accept, doesn't mean they are wrong. So I don't have their prejudgment. The motive is to understand the reality in objective form without any bias. You don't have to have any bias. You just go with a clean slate to understand the reality. To determine the truth in its complete form. What does it mean? Well, for example, if I, if I say soul is transient in nature, and I can just give you examples of that, that I said soul is transient because I have transiency within me changes occurring within me and all these changes occurring within me, they're transient. And so that's why soul is transient. 
And then I can just on the next day, next class, I can say soul is eternal in nature. Soul was never created. Soul will never die. Soul is, remains always there. Soul has an eternal existence attribute by which soul is existing forever without any external help from anybody else. And you said, wait a second. Yesterday you said soul was transient. Today you're saying soul is eternal. What is truth? To determine the truth in its complete form. You have to understand that soul is transient from certain perspective, modal perspective. Soul is eternal from the substance perspective. Both things are residing in the soul. Those both exact opposite things are residing in the soul at a given time. While soul is eternal, soul is transient in nature. Eternity and transiency both exist together in a given soul. From if substance perspective, soul is eternal. From modal perspective, soul is transient. Both are existing together in a given soul. So, remember this sentence I'm speaking next. In a given substance, at a given time, two exact opposite things operating. Once again, in a given substance, at a given time, two exact opposite properties residing. Transiency and eternity, both are residing together. That is called multiplicity point of view. That's called anekant. So definition of anekant is two exact opposite things residing in the soul substance at a given time and operating together. It's called anekant vad. So you, you have to remember this definition. Two exactly opposite thing residing in a given substance at a time is called multiplicity point of view. Most of the people you talk to them, they will just say, Anekant means this is, he says, this is true, this is true, this is true, this is true. We believe in Anekant. This is 100% wrong, according to Jainism. Anekant means a given substance, two exact opposite things operating at the same time, transience in eternity. That is called Anekant. For example, I am Kirit. Since birth till I'm going to be dead, I'm been called Kirit, 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 Kirit all the time. But Changes are occurring within me every moment. I could be called doctor. I could be called giant. I could be called retired person. I could be called father of the three kids. I could be called son of Prabhuda. And all kind of different aspects I can be say. But it, by, 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 by my name, I'm constant. So constancy is there. And changes are also in there. And so Changes and constancy run it uh, running together is called anekant in a given substance. So would you please remember this definition? Two exact opposite things residing in a given substance is called anekant. And this is the most important pillar of Jainism. Jainism sits on the three major pillars, non-violence, non-possessions, and multiplicity point of view. Three major pillars Jainism is standing. Non-violence, non-attachment, and multiplicity point of view. Anekan, Aparigraha, Ahinsa, these are three major pillars of Jainism. You may say, wait a second, we are digressing too much from the original stanza. It's okay. Why it's okay? Because today we learn what's a really, what's the definition of anekan. And if I don't understand that basic principle, 
then I want to understand. Simaji has given so much detailed thing. If you just dissect each and every sentence that he has spoken, you can take bigger and bigger and better and better types of principles of Jainism coming from his teachings. So we have to understand those things. To be devoid of any preconceived idea and to be free from any religious sex predetermined ideas is called equanimity. No, uh, uh, you are the Gamba. Uh, we have no part of No, no, you are Sthanakwasi, you have no part. You are Deravasi. So you, you, you don't have this preconceived idea. First thing, you have no right to blame to somebody. You just think about yourself, period, that's it. One has to have equanimity and to know the truth in its true form. Entire, entire of our truth has to be known. I have transiency within me. But at the same time, I'm an eternal substance, so I have to know eternity as well as transiency. Both understanding has to be there proper. If I know only transiency or only eternity in an in a individual form, that's not good. But transience and eternity both has to be known in the complete form, true form. Then we can understand what Simaji tries to say to us. One act according to the local custom and thereby act with partiality. In Phoenix, we, we, we believe this way. No, no, in Los Angeles, we believe it this way. So it's okay. There were different places, different customs can be different. It's all right. Whatever that people like, like for example, when you go to India, they said, well, if the Mahavir Jayanti is Mahavir Swami Janma Kalyanak day is coming on Chaitra Sutteras, you have to celebrate that day only, period. Over here, we made a different custom. Saturday, Sunday, what when that Saturday, Sunday comes after Mahavir Janma Kalyanak day, then we celebrate. So, is this something, something wrong? Are they, it, doesn't, it is just you are following the local custom. There is nothing right or wrong. You are doing some positive work. That is more important. So this kind of thing, equanimity, Madhyastata, he says. Uh, then Saralta, it comes to straightforwardness, means not to have pre preconceived ideas. No, in the past, he has a wrong impression, thereby cannot act with simplicity. Now the living being has given up ego, thereby ready to understand reality. Modern sense is wrong sense, and it's a crookedness state. He does not hide his own fault. He, has, he is now ready to accept the eternal true nature of the self, and inclusion towards the eternal self is the real nature of eligibility. Means these are some straightforward principle. These are the straightforward way a person is acting. He has no bias for anything else. He could be any person in the past. It doesn't make difference as long as he or she is on the right path right now. That is important. He just does not hide his fault. He can. He just manifests his fault to remove them from his self, etc., etc. That's called straightforwardness. And last one, winning over the objects of sense is Jitendriya Pana. Actually, this will take time. I'll just go, go quickly on this slide and then we'll talk next time about it. To have indifference towards the object of five senses. Initially, initially knowledge used to get stuck into the intense fruition of karma. Thereby knowledge was getting assessed with the greed. When the faith in state becomes milder, then knowledge starts getting purer. Means jitendriya pana means winning over this object of five senses. My, I have five senses. Through five senses, I express myself with the whole world, and I have oneness or unity with the worldly objects. Now. I have to remove that association. 
and I have to go within my eternal soul substance and experience my substance. That's my aim. So I have to win over this object of senses. How to do that? We will talk next week. It will take at least 10 minutes to talk about it. Time is almost there. So we will stop over here. But mainly what we are talking over here is uh, the eligibility and out of eligibility that uh, uh, Srimadji said so many things in which I am, uh, we have taken this last one, we start, no, no, this one, third bullet, we try to explain. Uh, the fourth bullet we can also explain, but it, uh, there's a separate, uh, uh, separate uh, uh, stanza coming for that in the future. We'll talk that one. Forbearance, straightforwardness, simplicity, non-attachment. This is already in the Slaksham Mahaparva when we celebrate the first four days are this, this four, four uh, uh, component element of the soul that we celebrate, etc. So Srimadji has different way. He has described um, uh, reality that how can I be eligible person to receive right faith? So we also learn from that. We also make ourselves in such a way so that we can also become eligible. And I will, I can, I must, I, I, I have capacity to do it. Have that kind of uh, um, uh, determination and you can do it. There's no language barrier. Don't say that because I don't understand Gujarati, I will not learn. Tell me that lion, how much language did he know? Nothing. He just had killed deer. There's a, a blood is coming out from his mouth. Meat is there in his mouth. And two monks, they descend and they say, oh my God, this is Mahavir soul. What is he doing here? They give discourses in the lion's language and lion realizes himself. So he was not knowing Gujarati or Sanskrit or Hindi or pra Prakrit or anything. So I can learn. I have no restriction of any language. Just have that determination, have that inquisitiveness. It will shape up our life. I can assure you, and I'm proud that at least you are young people have this, uh, this at least inquisitiveness to learn this philosophy. This is the greatest philosophy. And actually, I'll tell you, when I came to this country, I was anti-religion. I was atheist. I didn't believe in religion because of certain things that I saw back home and everything. Sometimes, some, some, some other time we'll talk about it. But when I started learning this one, I said, my God, this one has an amazing amount of information. And it will shape up your life accordingly. Believe me, I can assure you. It will just shape up your life and you, you will see the changes occurring within you. Some non, uh, unconsciously, some consciously, but you will have changes occurring because you understand what's a reality. So we'll stop over here and we'll talk a little bit more on this, uh, on this slide next time. But right now, we are just going to stop over here. If there's a question, we are going to take a question. Yes, any questions so far? OK, if not, then we'll do closing, OK? Samajavyo te padanamu Sri Sada Guru Bhagavan Paramapurusha Prabhu Sada Guru Paramajana Sukhadam Jene Atyu Banani Stene Sada Pranam Deha Chata Jene Dasha Varte Dehati Prabhujina Charanama Ho Vandana Agani Jai Jinendra. We'll stop. Jai Jinendra. Thank you, Kirit Bhai. Thank you. Jai Jinendra. Thank you, Uncle. Jai Jinendra. Thank you, Kirit